Enjoy all episodes of the RCWR show on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Hey ladies, listen up. I know how difficult it can be for you all out there doing what you do best to look oh so jazzy and oh so sexy and beautiful. You need the very best, especially when it comes to makeup, skincare, bath and body, perfumes, jewelry, the latest in fashion, and so much more. My good friend Melanie Duncan from Avon can help you out with all that. Check out her website at avonforevergorgeous.com. That's avonforevergorgeous.com. She offers free direct delivery with orders over $40. She puts great emphasis on personal care, tailor-made. Get this, it's tailor-made to meet all your beauty and cosmetic needs as she provides fantastic one-on-one consultation. So trust me, ladies, you're going to be in good hands. To begin your free consultation, call 917-755-4000. Four one again. That's nine one seven seven five five four zero four one. I'm gonna give that to you one more time. Nine one seven seven five five four zero four one. Hey, are you ready to browse and start shopping now? Or if you need more information, check out her website once again at avonforevergorgeous.com. That's avonforevergorgeous.com. One more time, avonforevergorgeous.com. If you or a loved one is suffering with drug or alcohol abuse, please listen. I want for you to get in contact with the Harvey House Manor. The Harvey House Manor is a residential treatment facility that is licensed through the State of California Department of Health Services. They assist men that identify themselves as having substance abuse addictions. They have groups with certified counseling and facilitators to help with art therapy, double AA community meetings, nature walks, batting cages, even movie night. They are located in Loma Linda, California. The Harvey House facility takes most PPO insurances. You can check them out on Facebook as well at Harvey House Manor. If you need immediate attention, pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-953-1383 and they can assist you with a new beginning to the road of recovery. It begins right now with a simple phone call to the Harvey House Manor. Toll free, 1-800-953-1383. That's 1-800-953-1383. One more time, 1-800-953-1383. The Harvey House Manor. Warning, the RCWR show with Lee Sanders is intended for a mature audience only. The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation, keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond since 2011, you're listening to the RCWR show. Now, your host, live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., Lee Sanders. And a happy 4th of July holiday to you all. What is going on? It is the one and only Lee Sanders. And you are checking out an all new VRCWR show coming at you this Tuesday, July 4th, 2017. How the hell have y'all been? I know we did not do a show for you guys last week, and I do apologize for that tremendously. You have no idea how really bad I felt about not doing a show last week, especially when we advertised it, and then it was, okay, we're going to do it on this day instead, and then, long story short, the show just did not happen at all. True story. There was actually an audio recording done of last week's episode. There was like an hour in the books. All I had to do was just sit down, pump out about an additional 40, maybe 50 minutes tops, and then boom, that was going to be it. The plan was to release it on a Sunday, but it did not happen because honestly, whether you've been a longtime listener or you've at least been listening to the past couple of weeks worth of episodes, 
you know that I've been working a second gig and my ass is honestly being handed to me left and right. I tell you, I have been physically just exhausted by the time I go home, mainly from the night gig. So it's kind of like, ugh. So I've really been spending the past couple of weeks trying to get into the groove of things, but like I'm now finally starting to get it. I'm now getting to that point where I have a nice good boost of energy in my system so we're gonna try to see if going forward we can really capitalize on that so don't be too surprised if co if going forward as far as taking off Tuesdays I think that's it's safe to say it's gonna be it for a good while that I'm gonna take off of a Tuesday unless I'm just really feeling under the weather or we're competing with something major, maybe a president, a dress, or something. Something really monumental that like, okay, you know what, we got to bow down to this. We will just come on either after that's over or we'll come on the next day. So kind of take that for what it's worth. I know a lot of you guys were looking forward to last week's show. But hey, at least you got this Tuesday 4th of July edition. Now we're doing something a little bit different for you guys. Normally... We air live on Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, as soon as SmackDown goes off the air. But given this the 4th of July holiday, it is early in the afternoon right now that I am sitting down recording this. I know for a lot of you guys, maybe not quite yet, you're seeing your loved ones getting that nice good cooking going on, that big grill and all that. Me, I'm actually taking it easy this year, and it is by choice. Quite honestly, with my type 2 diabetes, and honestly, just the phenomenal run that I've been on right now, especially since I've picked up this second gig, I have lost like an additional 15, almost 20 pounds. And so I really like seeing where the numbers are going right now. And if anything, I'm just more interested in seeing the numbers continue to get more and more in the right direction i want to get back down to about 190 and then maybe go from there my girl would like to see me even more smaller than that but i'm like i don't want to look too bony now i just want to look pretty damn good i think 190 is just fine so i'm like almost there man i'm almost there uh, i'm excited i basically got to lose about maybe 30 more pounds and i'll pretty much have reached that goal actually you know what no correction about a little bit less than 30 pounds, so probably about maybe 25 more pounds, and I'll actually have it, so we're going to see what we can do with that, but yeah, I I'm happy to be doing this for you guys, so here's how I wanted to do today's show. I want to talk about Raw, and then I want to get into some topics that kind of caught my eye a little bit since last we were on the air with you all, get into that, and then what will happen is in a couple of days... This week, for sure, probably at the very latest, I would say Thursday, I will release something else on demand and on the downloads. It'll be like a bonus episode. We're going to go on ahead and we're just going to say it's going to be a bonus episode of the RCWR show. But it's going to basically be a companion piece to what you all are checking out right now. And basically, it'll be part two, and then part two, we'll talk about SmackDown. I'll talk about some other key notes that kind of caught my eye that I wanted to share with you all. So we'll do it that way. We'll do a little experiment, and we'll see how that goes. So whatever you don't hear in this first part, maybe you're going to hear in the second part. And if you're hearing the second part first, and you're kind of like, well, what about this and this had went down maybe you should go back to part one does that make sense to a lot of you guys yeah yeah so other than that yeah so look uh i had ended the show somewhat on a little bit of i guess a cliffhanger last night or last week i'm not really sure if it was a cliffhanger or not but basically i was talking about how i had a little bit of concern over what was going on with my girl because she normally comes home like at a very decent time. She usually comes straight from work, 
comes right to the house and she's pretty much chilling for the rest of the night unless she's got to run a couple of Mary Kay errands or whatever. And I'm not going to bore you guys with the specifics, but she had somewhat of a scary incident as she was on her way home from work last week and she should have been back in the house like about... I don't know, definitely in time for the evening news. I'm not talking about the 11 o'clock news. I'm talking about how you got the 4 through 7 o'clock block of news. She should have been home somewhere around that time frame, but she wasn't. And it turns out she kind of had, I don't want to say a panic attack, but there was something weird going on with her. She was deep, deep out in heavy traffic, and she had a really difficult time going from the left side all the way to the right hand side to basically park in the emergency lane because she was starting to get the shakes starting to get the shivers uh she was having a hard time concentrating uh she was having some type of weird sensitivity issues with her hands couldn't really feel them or fingertips or her feet i mean she was just getting numb all over just some of the things that she had told me now she was diagnosed a couple of weeks back with pre-diabetes and ever since i heard that i've been doing everything and my part to make sure that she is getting lunch and she's eating breakfast. She's eating a really good healthy breakfast, but I'm also making sure that as far as her lunches go, it's healthy and it's definitely proportionate. So I believe she did not pack a lunch that day. I think it was because I had to go to work and I said to her, probably one of the last things I said to her was, honey, make sure you pack yourself a lunch because uh, you know, I don't have time to pack it. And uh, please, you know, make sure you eat something. And she was like, okay, no problem. I'll pack it. She didn't pack it. So I'm thinking maybe that was like part of the problem. But long story short, she actually had to have her mother and the mother's boyfriend they had came and they actually had took her to the hospital. The mother's boyfriend was really nice and he actually had came back to get my girl's car and pretty much drive it back to the house. So it was just, I'm just glad that she's in one piece. So she had got a series of tests done. Some of the results we already heard back from. She's getting ready to start some new medicine. And in a couple of weeks, there's going to be a little bit of a revisit with the doctor. And honestly, depending on how that goes, she may have to be on some type of a heart monitor device for a couple of days so they can really try to pinpoint what exactly is going on with her so i'll keep you guys updated on that but as you would imagine my mind definitely was kind of like elsewhere last week when all that had went down uh but i mean other than that everything has been going good over here i've honestly just been enjoying working this new job a lot of stuff has gone on in the wrestling world. Of course, we got to kind of rewind it back to about less than 24 hours ago. Talk about what had came about on Monday's WWE Raw. Look, this isn't a full-blown Monday Night Raw recap. I don't really like going over the whole recap. Now, look, when it comes to the pay-per-views, pay-per-views is one thing. But when it comes to talking about Raw, SmackDown, and all that, I honestly just like to go through the bullet points and keep it moving along. So, Raw had came to us from Phoenix, Arizona. And we are now six days away from Great Balls of Fire, the pay-per-view event that you'll be able to catch exclusively on the WWE Network. I believe that's going to also be available for cable satellite providers as well. But for now, it's definitely going to be on the WWE Network. Enzo Omori had kicked things off. I love the promo that he had cut in the middle of the ring. Basically, in a nutshell, his promo was, you know what? I've been knocked time and time again but you know what i keep getting up i keep getting up because i have a lot of heart i have a lot of passion i have confidence in myself and in my ability when it's all said and done i'm a certified g and he's just very confident and he has to continue to operate that way 
because when it's all said and done, he's grateful. He's basically grateful of the position that he is in right now with the WWE. And that's largely in part thanks to the WWE universe. So Enzo basically says, look, I'm going to keep on reaching. I'm going to keep going straight for the top. I'm going to go to new heights that I've never been before. And as far as I'm concerned, as it stands right now, I'm done catching feelings. Enzo has said that he's crawled out of holes way taller than seven feet, basically referencing his once tag partner, Big Kaz. He said Kaz is nothing but a seven foot catchphrase that Enzo wrote. Enzo says he, being Enzo, is where the money is at. Not Kaz, and that Kaz shouldn't be surprised if by the next quarter he takes a look at that merchandise check and it says zero dimes, zilch, nada. Enzo would pretty much wrap that up saying he's looking to uh, basically pick that mic back up and keep spitting that hot game. Keep getting out there in the middle of the ring, do what he does every single week. I mean, that pretty much was it. Music had came on. We thought he was done. He grabbed a microphone and was talking a little bit more. Uh, He says, hey, Kaz, what you did with that big boot? Basically that kissing my lips. It was like CPR. Uh, And he made a reference to his bandana, uh, linking it to Tupac and pretty much ending it uh, after that. Pretty much he was saying he's a soldier, and he gonna do what he's gotta do, or whatever like that, meanwhile, Carly Caruso was backstage, trying to get Kaz to react to the promo that he had, so Kaz says he's never heard someone talk so much crap before, without really saying anything, bam, out of nowhere, Enzo Amori attacks Kaz from behind, and the two of them actually started getting into a bit of a brawl, eventually we had saw referees and officials separate the two, I thought Enzo Amori's promo was very strong from the standpoint of, and I think it's really interesting how I've been talking to a couple of friends and co-workers about this particular rivalry, because Everybody I have spoken to has basically gone on record and said, Hey, Lee, there's no way I can really feel invested in this matchup because you look at Kaz. Come on, man. Look at that dude. He's like seven foot freaking tall. You look at Enzo Amore. He's going to be a freaking rag doll all night long. He is going to be Kaz's hound dog. He's going to be that whipping boy all night. I'm just having a hard time really getting into that matchup. And I totally get where people are coming from. I totally get that. And for me, when this breakup had first went down, I'm saying to myself, well, we know Enzo is going to have to get the payback. But like, how exactly are you going to tell that story? And I got to give the WWE writers a lot of props on this one, because immediately after Kaz did what he did a couple of weeks ago to Enzo, Enzo very well could have just came right out and he could have been looking for a fight with Big Cass. But that's not how it had went down, boys and girls. Actually, what went down was Enzo coming out the next week saying, Hey, Cass, I know you and me, we ain't really been able to see eye to eye. And look, man, a lot of the stuff that you said last week or a couple of weeks ago, it really hit close to home. You were really speaking the gospel. I agree with a lot of what you had said. Now, he didn't try to justify those things that were said negatively about him. He pretty much owned it. But even after all that, he still wanted to do what he could to salvage that relationship with Big Cass. So, for Big Cass to, two weeks in a row, or actually if you're being technical, three times, yeah, th- about three weeks in a row, beat the crap out of Kaz, or, or correction, beat the crap out of Enzo Omori, yeah, at that point, it's like, okay, Enzo's done. Surely now he's just enough talk. I want to kick your ass now. You're not going to keep doing me like this and think you're going to be able to get away scot-free. No, 
you know, win, lose, or draw, you know what? I got to stand my own two ground. I got to stand on my own two feet. Just as a man, as a man, I just cannot let you just continue to do these despicable things to me without standing my ground and taking you on face to face. Yeah, you might have the height advantage. Yeah, you might have the weight advantage. But you know what? I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to stand my ground regardless. And you know what? I love that story that is being told right now because quite honestly, come on. I know there are a decent amount of you guys that's out there in real life that have probably been in a situation where you had to fight somebody and that person that you fought, whether you're a boy or a girl, that person that you fought uh, was two times taller than you. They weighed a boatload more than you. You didn't think you had a chance, but somehow you were able to not only stand your ground, but you were maybe able to actually beat them up. Now, could Enzo Omori actually do that to Kaz coming up Sunday at Great Balls of Fire? Well, you guys definitely want to be paying attention to the Facebook because I will be dropping a special uh, Great Balls of Fire Call That Match edition. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, That's going to be... Oh yeah, awesome! It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, So, I I love that segment that had played out though. Enzo came off looking very, very strong. He came off very believable. Like, okay, you like for the very first time, I'm actually going, storyline-wise, I'm actually going, Enzo just may have a shot here. And remember what I alluded to a couple of weeks ago. I would not be surprised if Enzo had pulled a freaking upset over Cass in their first encounter. And Enzo basically is able to get a roll-up. Now, I'm not saying that roll-up is going to happen like three minutes into the match or something like that. But if you ask me straight up, the length of the match, I'm seeing about probably eight maybe nine minutes is definitely not going to be a 10 minute match i can see it playing out well i'll tell you what, i'll get into that match a little bit more on our call that match edition but i now believe storyline wise that enzo has a shot and i'll dive into more on how i think that match is going to play out in the ring on our call that match edition some other stuff that had came about from this week's raw that was a little bit interesting sasha banks and bailey they had took on nia Jax and alexa bliss we had saw the team of sasha banks and bailey pick up the win final moments of that matchup we had saw some shots being traded as alexa bliss was talking trash to sasha banks before slamming her bliss ended up missing a knee drop banks would come back with a running knee sasha had kept it up and basically uh knocked off nia Jax from the apron with a kick to the knee sasha had came in with a little bit more offense on alexa uh, it pretty much it ended with the bank statement for the W. Uh, from there, we had saw Raw General Manager Kurt Angle. He was seen in a backstage segment on his phone when Braun Strowman had approached him asking what's going on with Roman Reigns not being able to compete on Sunday. Angle says, as far as he's heard, Roman Reigns will be at the Great Balls of Fire event. Braun tells Angle, nah, dude, your sources are wrong. And that he was there to uh, basically, uh, as far as what went down last week from what he had saw, he felt Roman Reigns go limp. And Braun wants to know what Angle is going to do because Braun wants competition. Angle says that Reigns will be at the Great Balls of Fire event, but that he's not sure if anyone in the locker room wants to face Braun this close to the pay-per-view. Braun pretty much tells the Raw General Manager that he is going to be going down to that ring later on in the night and that Kurt better figure something out. Well, later on in the night, something would be figured out as Braun Strowman had took to the middle of the ring looking for that competition. We would see none other 
than freaking Titus O'Neil with his client Apollo Cruz and the way Cruz got sold into this Titus O'Neil basically said to him hey look man you just became a proud papa think how much of a really cool awesome story you'd be able to tell your daughter when she gets a little older about how you were able to defeat Braun Strowman I mean look at what Braun Strowman did for the career of Callisto Callisto is now on the map because of Braun Strowman you could pretty much go in that same direction only you could do the unthinkable and pull out an upset victory so that pretty much had got Apollo Crews going yeah you know what that actually sounds pretty damn good sure why not uh, I felt so sorry for my man Apollo Cruz. He got his butt handed to him. Just to add insult to injury too. And I was watching this with my coworkers. It was so hilarious because uh we were watching it on, on our phones and we saw the part where Barn Strowman had licked the hell out of Apollo Cruz's bald head. And I just said real loud, I said, my God, it's bad enough that Apollo Crews is like getting his ass handed to him throughout this match. But to have insult to injury, you take two scoop up power slams, but like right before the next one, you get a lick to your head, to your bald head. I would have rather taken a kiss to the forehead by Bray Wyatt and then wham sister Abigail I'll take that any day of the week damn Braun Strowman licking my head <laughs> that train, it just looks so freaking disgusting it had me thinking deliverance and all kinds of sick crazy crap man but we saw Apollo Crews he was made quick work of Titus O'Neil, he tried to come to his client's aid. Braun Strowman gestured to him to get in the ring. Titus, he really didn't want any of it at first, but then he was like, you know what? Forget this. So he actually get in there, brawled with Braun Strowman for a little bit. Had a nice little bit of offense, but it just wasn't enough. Braun pretty much had made quick work of him as well. Resumed beating the crap out of Apollo Crews. Sent him on over to the ambulance truck, threw him in there. And actually had banged on the back doors to signal for the driver to take off. The ambulance did not take off. He did it a couple more times. Ambulance still would not take off. So finally he went over to the driver's side. Boom. It was Roman Reigns. Two of them get into a fight. Raw had pretty much ended with Roman Reigns spearing the hell out of Braun Strowman. That's pretty much how Raw went off the air. So... Roman kind of getting a little bit of that mojo because remember Braun, Roman Reigns, they're going to be having their ambulance match at the Great Balls of Pay-Per-View event and we'll definitely talk about that respected matchup later this week in a special installment of Call That Match. We'll be tackling that pay-per-view and I'll be offering match predictions. Normally I'm not that much of a fan of 205 Live, but I gotta tell you, the match that we had with Neville taking on Mustafa Ali on Raw this week, I tell you what, man, originally I was actually going to use that opportunity to use the bathroom but I say, you know what, Neville's in this, let me show this guy some proper respect, because I've been saying for the longest, this guy needs to go back to being heel, he, some of his best work was as a heel, and honestly, a lot of the matches that I see him in, when he does a one-on-one -on -one match, is typically on point, I say, what the hell, I tell you, if you had skipped this match, because I know a lot of you guys, when the 205 matches come on, you skip, if you skip this one, do yourself a favor, see if you can find it online, or maybe you can wait until this weekend, because I know the Universal Channel, depending on your cable satellite provider, they will do encores all weekend of Raw and SmackDown, they'll show them like back to back, do yourself a favor, go out of your way and check out that matchup, that was just a fantastic matchup, Neville picking up the victory, uh, my God, it was a great, great back and forth, man. Really great back and forth. Uh, some other action that had came about. Honestly, one of the biggest segments of the night that really jumped out at me. I love the Michael Cole inter uh, interview from the announcer's table between Samoa Joe and the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Uh, we had saw Paul Heyman. 
Uh, he's in there smiling because he's he's sitting right next to his client, the base incarnate Brock Lesnar. Uh, we saw a really another good strong segment between Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. Uh, these two guys were arguing back and forth. I, I was loving it. Uh, Joe tried to take a little bit of a shot at Paul Heyman, asking him how did it feel to be in that Conquilla clutch. Uh, but Brock Lesnar's like, hey, Paul Heyman isn't the one that's facing you this Sunday, son. I'm the one that's facing you. Uh, you know, so why don't you talk to me? Because it's about you and me right now. And, uh, they were arguing. I mean, they were just, I mean, it was a hot segment. They were just going back and forth. Lesnar pretty much had told Joe, how things are going to be playing out on Sunday. He's basically going to come in with the title and he's going to leave with the title and Joe is going to get nothing. Lesnar calls Joe uh, a coward and they just continue to go back and forth. Joe says it's funny how Lesnar doesn't fear him when they're being separated backstage on this very night, Lesnar says it's for Joe's own safety. And they pretty much had continued to go back and forth until Joe rips off his mic, says he's tired of talking. And he actually walks through the backstage area to try to look for Lesnar uh, for a fight. Heyman and Lesnar, they're just chilling in their interview room. And they're like, OK, so he's coming to look for us apparently okay what the hell joe runs into kurt angle and security uh he pays them no mind he finally opens the door to lesnar's interview room but security is now holding him back and joe is just pretty much pissed off after that as he's spoiling for a fight and that pretty much was it it, it pretty much had ended like that uh honestly i really wish that uh, things would have came back to them. I, I would have loved to seen those two guys brawl one more time. Uh, cause I just felt that the way that segment had ended was a little bit abrupt. But of all the matches I'm looking forward to, I, I gotta tell you, this has shades of that UFC, uh, fight that Brock Lesnar had with that guy Mark Hunt. I, I mean, that is exactly what this is reminding me of right now on so many levels. I know a lot of you guys are probably picking up that same vibe as well. For those of you that are very familiar with your MMA and all that, I know I'm not alone when I say that. Because, I mean, ever since I saw these guys first lock it up, I'm going Brock Lesnar, Mark Hunt, UFC 200, hands down. That is exactly what it's reminding me of. It's like what would happen if Mark Hunt had came to the WWE spoiling for a revenge fight, a fair fight against Brock Lesnar. Well, this is probably how it would freaking play out. Uh, but I got to tell you, I got to give WWE writers, booking team a lot of praise for the way they have just continued to honestly, brilliantly book Samoa Joe. How is things going to play out at the Great Balls of Pay-Per-View event? I would love to believe that Triple H is doing everything he can in his power to swing things in favor of Joe maybe taking the title off of Lesnar and somehow setting up some type of a rematch that could maybe go down as early as SummerSlam. So, of course, that would mean Joe's going to keep the belt going through one Raw branded pay-per-view before going on to SmackDown. Only time will tell, man, but really been loving what those two guys been doing. Other than that, uh, great Finn Balor's Cesaro matchup. Uh, Finn Balor went in that one. I actually had liked that one. That was actually a pretty good matchup. Uh, but honestly, there really wasn't anything else that jumped out at me, uh, from Raw this week. Yeah, the Intercontinental title match between Heath Slater, The Miz, that was actually pretty entertaining, especially if you're a big fan of The Miz and you're also a big fan of Heath Slater. Uh, that was actually a decent matchup as well, but there really wasn't anything else that was really eye opening. Uh, this week, I didn't even particularly care for the gold dust R Truth segment. I, I didn't really particularly care for that one, quite honestly. I, I guess because I'm so ready to like see gold dust move on. 
I'd like to see, okay, now that you got our truth in your rearview mirror, like what's next? Who are you going to be taking on next? You no, know, that kind of brings up a very interesting idea too. I wonder what the odds are of an alliance between Go Dust, the bizarre one, and the eater of worlds, Bray Wyatt. That would be a pretty damn interesting tag team. And dare I say, one tag team that could actually be tag team champions. I think that alone could go to some very interesting places. I'd love to know what you guys think of that one. I think I might be on... Oh, sorry about that. A little staticky there. I accidentally had moved the microphone there. I think I might be on to something. Let me know what you guys think with regards to that one. And other than that, we got to go to our Twitter poll where we had asked you guys, how would you rate WWE Raw for this week? Taking a look at the latest results right now, you all have about, I'd say about four days left to cash your vote. So far, we have 6% that gave it a thumbs down. Meanwhile, 25% of you are staying right in the middle and an overwhelming 69% of you are giving it a thumbs up. Where am I right now? I'm not exactly in the middle. I'm slightly more towards the thumbs up because of the main, the main factors that jumped out at me for this week. Uh, it's definitely nowhere near staying in the middle though. I, I mean, for me personally, the slight edge definitely goes for the thumbs up. I mean, if I had to like out of a hundred percent, I mean, honestly, it's like maybe 70, 30. Uh, yeah, about 70, 30. I would have to go in that direction. So this is what I want to do right now. I want to take a brief pause. And I want for you to hear a word from our sponsors for tonight's episode. We definitely thank the sponsors that's going to be working with us on the next couple of episodes. So I want for you all with open minds and ears to take in these great ads. And then when we come back, we will dive into some headlines that caught my eye since last we were on the air that I couldn't wait to talk to you all about. And some pretty interesting news uh, as far as the future of the RCWR show and a ongoing sponsor we're going to be taking on permanently for uh, all future episodes. I think you guys will really enjoy this one. So, oh, by the way, I have some very interesting, awesome con news that I want to share with you all. So we'll dive into all of that. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hey, ladies, listen up. I know how difficult it can be for you all out there doing what you do best to look oh so jazzy and oh so sexy and beautiful. You need the very best, especially when it comes to makeup, skincare, bath and body, perfumes, jewelry, the latest in fashion, and so much more. My good friend Melanie Duncan from Avon can help you out with all that. Check out her website at avonforevergorgeous.com. That's avonforevergorgeous.com. She offers free direct delivery with orders over $40. She puts great emphasis on personal care, tailor-made, get this, it's tailor-made to meet all your beauty and cosmetic needs as she provides fantastic one-on-one consultation. So trust me, ladies, you're going to be in good hands. To begin your free consultation, call 917-755-4041. Again, that's 917 917- Seven five five four zero four one. I'm gonna give that to you one more time. Nine one seven seven five five four zero four one. Hey, are you ready to browse and start shopping now? Or if you need more information, check out her website once again at avonforevergorgeous.com. That's avonforevergorgeous.com. One more time, avonforevergorgeous.com. If you or a loved one is suffering with drug or alcohol abuse, please listen. 
I want for you to get in contact with the Harvey House Manor. The Harvey House Manor is a residential treatment facility that is licensed through the State of California Department of Health Services. They assist men that identify themselves as having substance abuse addictions. They have groups with certified counseling and facilitators to help with art therapy, double AA community meetings, nature walks, batting cages, even movie night. They are located in Loma Linda, California. The Harvey House facility takes most PPO insurances. You can check them out on Facebook as well at Harvey House Manor. If you need immediate attention, pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-953-1383 and they can assist you with a new beginning to the road of recovery. It begins right now with a simple phone call to the Harvey House Manor. Toll free, 1-800-953-1383. That's 1-800-953-1383. One more time, 1-800-953-1383. The Harvey House Manor. And we are back! So, I have some awesome con news I want to share with you all. Now, I briefly had talked about this on Facebook, and I briefly had talked about this on Twitter. I believe I also had mentioned it on Patreon, which, by the way, shout out to our Patreon members. I'm just waiting a couple of more days to see who all is being cleared for this month, but Now's the time to get in on Patreon exclusive only content because let me tell you guys, I'm working on a lot of cool stuff. This Sunday, I'm going to be doing a on location edition of 30 with Lee. I'm going to be tackling a review for Spider-Man Homecoming. So I can't wait to do that. That's going to be pretty phenomenal. Uh, you guys will be able to actually see me in the flesh and all that for this 30 with Lee special as I'll be on location. So that's exclusive to our Patreon members. Also, I'm going to be picking the brain of Titus Machiavelli. I know he would be up for it, but we're going to try to see if we could do something exclusive for the Patreon members. And also, I'm going to be seeing about working with Epic Sports to see if maybe we could do some type of a Q&A edition where we can generate X amount of questions from the listeners at Epic Sports combine it with some of what you all maybe have to ask slash say and we'll try to see if maybe we can do some type of a cool collaboration uh that way we got more bonus episodes of 30 with Lee that's coming honestly probably one of the hiccups that was like okay so what are you going to be talking about I know we're like in the middle of the uh my favorite gangster films uh, so I kind of was like, okay, do I talk about this one or do I talk about that one? It's like, so I finally got that hammered out. So when it's all said and done, the month of July, you should see uh, at least, God, you should see at least three new episodes of 30 with Lee. And then we're going to try to see what we can do with Titus Machiavelli. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you guys have not gotten in on the Patreon content you really need to because only through Patreon are you guys able to access exclusive video and audio content. Patreon.com forward slash RCWR show. Check it out. Really great stuff. And uh, don't take my word for it. I mean, honestly, you can definitely ask the people that uh, check out the content. I, I think if they had only one gripe, honestly, it's need more uh, of the great exclusive content. And uh, now that I'm really getting the hang of the new jobs, I'm really finding my niche as far as, okay, I've got my rest here. All right, let me hurry up and pump this out. Now that I've kind of gotten the groove of things, I'm definitely going to be pumping out a lot more great content. So one other thing that I wanted to get into, uh, I didn't mean to get all sidetracked like that with Patreon, but I figured, hell, since we're in the plug-in mode right now, let me go on ahead, you know, plug away or whatever. But one other thing that uh, I wanted to get into, awesome con, right? So I... Mentioned this on social media, but I did not mention this on the show. At least maybe I did, but it was briefly. But I want to stress it again. 
I want you all to do me a huge favor. You can go on YouTube and check out the Awesome Con 2017 playlist. And I'm telling you, it would help out the show tremendously if you guys watch all of that. I think there's like six videos total. Now, one of the videos, which was like my last day covering awesome con and we pretty much did like a collage of like some highlights or whatever that's doing pretty well it's got like over a thousand views right now on youtube i would love it if the rest of the awesome con related content could get the same amount of views as well or even higher because what i'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks is basically hitting up the pr team for awesome con the publicist and all that and i'm gonna be like hey look just to give you guys an update here's where we are with the numbers i really want to show them that hey look try to look out for us next year because i'm definitely interested in bringing the show to awesome con next year and honestly i would love to not only go as part of the press but i also would love to go as uh as a vendor so basically the RCWR show would be on location at AwesomeCon the entire time and I basically would do freaking highlights live right there on the air. Uh, I'm thinking doing some really cool live web stuff. It, it, it's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, it, it, I'm telling you, I, I got so much awesome ideas that's in my mind right now and that is a large reason why that for the next little bit 30 with lee is going to go on the road and it's going to be a 30 minute uh i won't say a web series uh it's just going to be a technically it is a web series but i think you guys know what i'm trying to say so i'm looking forward to that and then the other thing i want to bring to you all's attention is we have a new permanent sponsor for the RCWR show, and you're going to be hearing some really cool ads. Something's going to be debuting by next week's episode. I just got to sit down and really work out the kinks on it, really work on how it should be executed, the ad that is. And I'm probably going to get with my man BC to figure it out, but I'm going to be hooking up with uh, my good friend Brian and his boy Ronald from oblivion comics and oblivion comics is now one of the official sponsors for the rcwr show so going forward we're going to be like hey rcwr show is brought to you in part by and i definitely want you to show some love to my guys now you can follow brian all throughout social media and learn a lot more about Oblivion One Comics. I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. I actually don't have it in front of me. So you all are going to have to bear with me a few seconds here as I pull up the video. And let me kindly remind you all that you are checking out the RCWR show. I am your host, of course, the one and only Lee Sanders. Don't forget you can catch me live every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, as soon as SmackDown goes off the air. All right, so let's see what we got here. I got to load up the next page, and here we are. I can load this up. Boom. There we go. All right, so special shout out to my man, Brian Carpenter. You can learn more about him and Oblivion Comics. He's on Twitter at SpiderBC. That's S-P-Y-D-E-R-B-C, like before Christ. You can check out his artwork at www.theartofthebrian.blogspot.com. I'll give that to you one more time. www.theartofthebrian.com. The Brian dot blogspot dot com. He's also on Instagram at the art of the Brian. And for Oblivion Comics, you can check out Facebook.com forward slash Oblivion Comics One. Again, that's Facebook.com forward slash Oblivion Comics 
one. So very happy to say that uh, they are a permanent sponsor of the RCWR show. And uh, the two new sponsors that you heard, they're going to be working with us on the next batch of episodes of the RCWR show for the next couple of weeks. So really happy to have all these guys uh, on board, man. And uh, if you're interested in advertising opportunities with the rcwr show get at me all throughout social media and we'll see if we can make something happen my pretty babies i follow this woman on her facebook page i never say anything out in the open normally if i have any words of encouragement or whatever i just want to say hello it's pretty much between me and her i will private message her but i definitely want to send A heartfelt speedy recovery to WWE Hall of Famer Tammy Sunny Sitch. I don't know if you guys had been keeping up with the latest news. How many of you all are connected with her on her Facebook page? Because that's really where she's active the most. I know she has all other forms of social media, but she, she does a big bulk of her stuff on Facebook. Well, she was taken to the hospital over the weekend. Uh, or actually last weekend, and then again this past weekend. Now, she is still hospitalized at the Southside Hospital in Bayshore, New York. She noted on Twitter last Sunday that she was having a horrible effing day, and she had asked someone to please make it better. I'll tell you exactly what she had said on Facebook. She said, why is it when I meet a normal guy, And we're getting along great. He disappears all of a sudden with no warning. He must found out what I do for a living. And that's so judgmental and sucky. F you then. I don't need you. So just now on my way to the gym, I stopped for a sandwich because I'm starving. Some guy who recognized me took it upon himself to sit down at my table, start talking to me. And long story short, offered me money for sex. When will you a-holes realize I'm not a effing escort or hooker? F you all. Uh, she then posted photos of a bruise and said that she needed to get out of the hospital writing. Okay, need to get out of this hospital. They will only release me if someone comes to me. Who is near Stony Brook? Who can come sign me out and get me out of here now? And uh, shout out to my good buddy Epic Sports. Please make sure you're showing the photos of what has been happening to her these past couple of days. Because, I mean, you got like three set of photos, Epic. You got one joint with her wrist pretty banged up. Uh, there's another one. Looks like another shot of her arm. And bruised up again. And, uh, of course, we got to get the joint with the back of her head. And looks like her neck is in a sling or whatever but it is it is crazy it, it is freaking crazy because then last thursday uh, she had wrote that her heart was broken again and then on friday she wrote that no one cares about her before being taken to the hospital on saturday uh, she wrote that she was at the emergency room because she passed out and fell and uh, there's blood in her hair. I, I mean, it, it just, it looks really, really, really bad. And I'm just looking at this and I'm just wondering, like, is she okay? Is she sincerely okay? Because I know what a lot of people are going to be saying out there when they see these photos. They're going to be like, okay, is she like in some type of a current abusive relationship uh, is she back on the drugs? Like, w- what the hell is going on here? Honestly, from what I can tell you from a distance, cause I mean, look, I, I don't, I don't mess with Sonny like that. I, I don't be engaged with her in any type of personal conversations, uh, whatsoever. Uh, if she's replied to any of the stuff that I've said in private messages, I don't know anything about it, quite honestly. Uh, and I check my filtered spam stuff. All right. I mean, I, I don't even know if she reads the stuff that I send her sometimes, but just my two cents from a distance, what I've been seeing of her. As I've been following her on Facebook for a couple of years now, I, I want to say maybe two and a half years. The girl is trying really, really hard 
to get her life together. And she's trying to do the best that she can. And look, everybody's going to be a judge. Everybody is going to question some of the decisions that she's making with her personal life as far as how she decides she wants to make money. Quite honestly, uh, that's her right. Who are we to judge? Uh, you know, it really doesn't have anything to do with us. And to those of us that feel truly offended by what she's doing as a profession to make some type of money for herself, try to support herself. Uh, you know, honestly, if we're that appalled by it, don't buy any more of her merchandise. Make sure that when it comes to those conventions, if we're that appalled, don't go up to her table. Don't spend that 20, 30, 40, or however many dollars to pose with her or get an autograph photo and all that. I mean, that's honestly what I would say to anybody that's that appalled by what she's doing to generate money. But honestly, I have been seeing a woman that uh, has been sober for X amount of days that every single week is hitting the gym. And I don't mean once a week. She usually dedicates a day working on her chest. Uh, she usually dedicates a day working on her legs, a uh, day working on her um her arms. Uh, she's in the gym at least three times a week, uh, sometimes four, but definitely three times a week. Uh, she's cooking all kinds of yummy food. I mean, I've seen so much food and I think anybody that follows her on a Facebook page will back me up on this. There's not a week that goes by. Sonny, at least, God, it feels like at least four days a week. That girl is cooking something, maybe even five days a week. She's cooking something. If she's not cooking something, she's definitely adding on top of the cooking something that she's eating while out. And I tell you, a lot of the stuff, she's a pretty damn good cook. When you see how everything just starts, and she does it all with pictures. She shows you how it starts off, and then she shows you the end result. And it's like, wow, that's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, she's doing her best to hang out with friends. And I, I'm not really getting the vibe of someone that honestly is, is, is off sobriety and they're doing all kinds of stupid, silly shit. They're back on the drugs again. I honestly believe I'm actually going to give her the benefit of doubt because I don't like spend hours looking at her Facebook page, but she's only one of a few people that I follow on Facebook, on my personal page, she's one of the few people that I follow on social media. So as a result of that, she usually will pop up in my timeline and I don't even have to look for her. She's just one of the first people that I see in my timeline. So I'm not generally, sincerely, I'm not getting the vibe that uh, she's doing the drugs again. Uh, I know the pictures may kind of suggest like, damn, is she in some type of a messed up relationship or whatever? What's going on? I'm not really getting that vibe, uh, as well. I just think that sometimes it happens to people that sometimes people just have a case of bad luck, whether it extends a day, a week, two weeks, or the entire month. Some people just come across that bad streak from time to time. So definitely, I, I hope things really, really get better for Sunny. Because so far, it's not looking so bright and sunny at her neck of the woods right now. You know, I am a big fan of Rebby Hardy. I'm not really sure how I'm going to feel with regards to this topic. I mean, we're going to find our way through this because honestly, I really haven't been marinating on it. I heard about the news and I just was like, wow, this went down. Wow. So check this out, right? This happened a couple of days ago. Rebby Hardy, as you all know, the wife of WWE star Matt Hardy, she had took to Twitter to respond to a fan collage of photos that had included Lita along with other photos of her husband, Matt. And as many of you know, Matt and Lita, they had a real life relationship, which ended up playing out in a storyline on WWE TV. 
Uh, basically, for you newer listeners, for you newer wrestling fans that don't really know that much about that whole ordeal that had went down, uh, Matt Hardy, Lita, they were a real life, a legitimate couple. And you had a situation that occurred where Lita had got injured seriously, like big time. She was on the sideline, so she was sitting on the sofa pretty much outside looking in. Matt Hardy, he's doing his thing. He's at 100%. And like Lita no longer on the road and everything. It's like, what the hell? What's going to happen with me now? Man, I think this is going to be like the final nail in the coffin. Because if I'm not involved in wrestling, if I'm not on the road out there with Matt, I I just don't see how this relationship is going to last because we're now officially going in different directions. So uh, that's pretty much how it all had kind of like started. And if my memory serves me correctly, I believe something had played out where once she was at 100% and she came back, I believe, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm dusting off some serious cobwebs here, just trying to remember. I don't really like looking up stuff nowadays. I really like to try to test my memory, but I believe maybe Matt either got injured, or if the story is how I recall it, maybe maybe Matt was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to go to this town or whatever. Hey, Adam, you think you could take Lita instead? And honestly, long story short, the more and more Lita and Adam, uh, Edge, had hung out together, the more they realized that they were more than just bros or whatever, that, hey, uh, there's something there. You know, you know, maybe we should kind of explore this and see what's going on. And honestly, it would have made a lot of sense to go on ahead, go in that direction with first things first, take care of business, talk to the necessary other parties involved make sure they're all on the same page they know what's going on that way nobody's feelings get hurt and once Matt had found out what was going on as you would imagine he was pretty pissed off he was belligerent uh spoiling for a fight and WWE they 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 just didn't want to have all that so honestly at that time for them Edge was very promising generating a little bit of money i mean they saw big dollar signs in edge uh they saw still marketability with lita uh they really felt as though matt hardy was expendable so they decided you know what we're just going to terminate his contract and it took about maybe seven months before matt hardy had came back to the wwe because the fans were so vocal about it i still remember the infamous bite this episode that Todd Grisham would do uh, where Lita was taking calls or whatever and Matt Hardy freaking called in I, I mean that was just one of the most awkward editions of bite this uh, that I recall in recent memory and I mean Matt Hardy just came off like a freaking the perfect song for Matt Hardy uh, at, at that time, everything that was going on with Lita, Sting and the Police, Every Breath You Take. Now, so many people, and this always gets Sting chuckling. They say, oh, we got married to your song, uh, Every Breath You Take. Oh, such a romantic. And Sting has said it numerous times over the years. And I'm not talking about Sting the Wrestler. I'm talking about Sting from Sting and the Police, the rock band from back in the 80s. Uh, Sting would say in numerous interviews that, like, as flattered as he is that people are getting married to that song, they're not actually paying attention to the lyrics. And he's blatantly said numerous times that the song uh, is about somebody that is taking basically the heartache, the the breakup from a loved one so like painfully that it's turned them into like basically a stalker or whatever. Like you got to go back and listen to it. But like that episode of bite this Matt Hardy was just really coming off like a creepy bastard when it was all said and done. So, uh, Vince McMahon, he, he listened to the unanimous support. So many fans were in favor of Matt Hardy. As soon as they found out what was going on edge, I mean, he was getting instant heat 
Lita was being called whore. She was being called slut. I, I, I mean, if you were to see it happen today, I can just imagine the, the, I can just imagine the PG police running around like crazy. The PG, PC, all them guys just running around just, oh my God, right? But that's it in a nutshell. What all had went down. All right. So I can understand Rebby Hardy feeling a little bit kind of like, what the hell? So you got these tweets that went out there. Here's what Rebby had said. You guys send me your unwarranted opinions on every aspect of my life all day, every day. But get mad when I call a spade a spade. What? Do I give off the vibe that I'm timid? Is that what you're interpreting here? baby twitter account if i didn't you'd complain that every post on every platform was about them damn never had a proud parent of you Uh, a lot of you all got daddy issues for how mad you are that i'm extra when it comes to my kiddos sorry your parents hate you bruh common sense above all if you can't come at me with it You don't deserve respect in return. Uh, He had this one girl. She was like Team Extreme 2.0. And she basically was like at Matt Hardy, at Rebby Hardy, at Jeff Hardy brand, at Baby Hardy. Right. And uh, Rebby comes right in and she says, don't tag my kids in pictures with this hoe. Now, you know what? When it's all said and done, Rebby is entitled to feel how she wants to feel. Uh, I would like to believe that a young fool eventually metamorphs to a wise old fool, right? I, I would, I would love to believe in that ideology. So, I mean, when you look at, look, when it's all said and done, Lita, Edge, they've said it numerous times in interviews. And if you don't believe me, you can easily find it online. All right. Shit. I think Lita most recently on Lillian Garcia's podcast had talked about it. So that, that's how current you can get now. I'm quite sure that if things could have been done differently, if they could have handled it an entirely different way, they would have, you know, but I mean, that's, that's the beautiful thing called life. You know, it's like, don't do this, do that. But like when you're in the heat of the moment, things happen. The best thing you can do is as soon as stuff goes down, you honestly got to have that line of communication. Like as soon as it goes down, doesn't really help. You really shouldn't be doing it at all, depending on what it is. But I know for a fact, if they could have done some things differently, they would have. Right. So, I mean, who are we to judge? We all make mistakes all the time. Right. But like, I would love to believe that maturity, time, reflections has really caught up to Lita. And honestly, here's where I kind of differ from Rebby. I get Rebby feeling how she felt. And Lord knows that, uh, she is well aware of maybe how hurt Matt was when all that had went down. But you gotta be bigger than that, man. You, you just have to be. Look, nobody is saying you gotta be friends with this person. Nobody is saying that you gotta play footsie and everything like that. But let me tell you something. If WWE decides, you know what? Maybe it's time we put the trio back together. Team Extreme. Maybe it's time we do that. We might be able to squeeze a couple of more dollars off of this. Matt, you down? Jeff, you down? Lita, you down? Rebby, don't mess with that money, honey. Like, you know, what I pick up, the genuine vibe that I pick up from what Rebby had laid out is a woman that maybe, maybe, and and look, I'm entitled to my own opinion. This is an opinionated show, but I'm going off of my past experience from when I've dated women. And let me tell you something, 
Rebbe is really having that that sensor, that spidey sense right now that I got. She's got it tingling because she comes off to me as a woman that possibly feels a bit threatened by Lita. Just the fact that she is, you know, still like connected to the WWE. She's still associated with the WWE. She still has a contract with them. And time to time she does a little something, something with them. So I can understand wanting to mark your territory, so to speak. He's my man now, right? My own girl who I have been dating now for six years. No BS. I, I, I BS you not. Whenever I just think of a, a fun moment that I had with my now deceased uh, ex-wife or maybe a, a girl I had used to date or whatever like that. I have to be very, very careful because even if it's something that really is very freaking harmless, my girl is the type of woman who will get jealous real quick and she'll always manage to turn it into a situation uh, where, you know, well, what about me? Or, you know what I'm saying? And, and, that, and that's just a territorial thing that all women, all women are like that. Because they want to feel as though they are it. And they are it. But some women, you know, when you go down that memory lane, you got to be careful. <coughs> you got to be careful because some of them, they will be really quick to mark that territory and any like... Any like opportunity that they have of ammo that you give them, mind you, about, oh, well, th that person was a bitch because blah, 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 blah. They'll be quick to use that ammo in order to put themselves over and vindicate themselves because they want to feel of great value. So I totally get where Rebby is right now, especially at this point in time in her life. Now, Two kids, right? Now there's two kids in the picture. And honestly, I think motherhood has done wonders for her. I, I think it's made her look even more beautiful. And uh, dare I say, uh, look even more voluptuous. And I say that in the most respectful, tasteful way, Rebby Hardy. I, I, I sincerely mean that, okay? Uh, you looked good before. But you look freaking marvelous. I, I got to hit that Billy Crystal joint now. Because she looks marvelous. But Rebby, honey, you've been married. Or you've been married. You've been in a relationship with Matt Hardy now for X amount of years. Matt ain't going nowhere. You ain't got nothing to worry about. There ain't no reason you got to be jumping out there at Lita like that. Be the bigger and better person. Do like I do. If I come across something a fan says that I don't like, I never want to like hear from that particular person again because maybe it just irked me the hell out. I could be having a good day and I see something that they saying to me, they mentioning me in something that I don't really want to be part of. I mute them. I mute them. I don't have, I don't block them. I just mute them so I never see another tweet from them again. Rabbi, I'm telling you, if you do that, it, it saves you a lot of the drama. It saves you a lot of the headache. It saves you a lot of, uh, of trolling that could possibly come your way. I can just imagine the tons of freaking hate messages that she got on Twitter after she said what she said about Lita, because Lita still respectfully has her fans, massive amounts of fans, mind you. But yeah, Rebby, please, 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 if I could just give you some good friendly advice, never go down that path again. Remember, when it's all said and done, you are a parent. And how you conduct yourself on social media and all that. I know your kids are still relatively young, but that's the thing with social media, man. It is a freaking time capsule. Once it's there, 
once it's out there, it is there for eternity. You can always go back and five years from now, 10 years from now, it's like, wow, you said that? Damn, what, what was up with that? So, you know, it's always good to get that ball rolling because sooner or later you're going to get to that point where you're going to have to teach your kids a thing or two about social media and right now especially with what we have going on with a president that's in office right now that's just saying all kinds of stuff on twitter and i don't really mean to single out the president but we do have individuals in general that think that they can say and do any type of thing on social media and that there's no ramifications of those actions whatsoever well sorry but there is it's now gotten to that point in today's day and age in today's day and age where you really got to think before you commit the act so, uh, Rebby Hardy, I'm still a big fan of yours, and I don't want people going, oh, you're kissing. No, no, no. I'm not kissing anybody's butt. Anybody that's been a long-time listener knows how much of a fan I am of Rebby Hardy. Uh, I've been a fan of hers for a, a good minute now, and I will continue to be a fan of Rebby Hardy. Uh, honestly, the, the advice I'm giving Rebby in a nutshell, no matter how much you may want to respond, you always just kind of got to go... Wait a minute, cause and effect. You know, if I go this route, eight out of ten, am I going to have a boatload of people? Yeah, probably. Okay, so what do I do? I love the fact that she's outspoken, but sometimes she can be a little bit too outspoken to the point that sometimes it could, it can almost backfire on her. And this is kind of, to a degree, almost one of those rare instances where She said something that kind of backfired a bit because you have so many people that are coming to the defense of Lita and they're like, man, this stuff that went down with Amy, that's that's like years ago. Like, you're still caught up on that? What the hell? Honestly, just do like I do. Somebody says something that I don't like, I mute them and that's it. I don't have to see them again, uh, hear from them again, uh, unless I decide I want to go out of my way on my Twitter account to look for them. Uh, and by that point, hopefully I still remember their freaking handle, you know? Hey, Epic, I want you guys to try this little experiment here and let's see how many gamers we got that's going to be paying attention to this one. I really do not see that many people in the wrestling community who happens to be big gamers as well talking about this. So I'm curious what everybody thinks about this. Maybe you all had missed it as you were getting ready for the 4th of July holiday but some news had came out within I would excuse me within I would say the past week looks like the Super NES Classic Edition system is going to be coming out. Yes, the successor to the NES Classic Mini. Yes, the Super NES Classic Edition. It's going to have the original look and the feel of the actual 90s Game console, just smaller. It's being officially released by Nintendo and it's going to be coming fully loaded with 21 games. You're going to get two wired retro Super NES classic controllers included for multiplayer games right out of the box. For those of you that may be a little bit curious, what's the games you're going to be getting? You're going to get Super Mario World, one of my personal favorites, Super Mario Kart, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. I used to play the hell out of that game. F-Zero, another one I used to play the hell out of. Super Metroid, one of my all-time favorite games. For the first time ever, you guys will be able to play the never-before-released Star Fox 2 Another one of my all-time favorites, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Punch-Out, Castlevania 4, Donkey Kong, Mega Man 10, Kirby Superstar, Final Fantasy 3, Kirby's Dream Course, Star Fox, I love Star Fox, God was that a hard freaking game, Yoshi Island, 
Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Secret of Mana, Earthbound, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Apparently this is going to be available on September 29th, 2017. Now, as it stands right now, for those of you that may be a little bit curious to get on that bandwagon and try to see if you can pre-order right now, uh, doesn't look like you can just yet. There is no retailer info just yet. Uh, so honestly, the way you all want to stay connected, you're welcome to try Amazon. You could definitely try, uh, your nearby GameStop. You just pretty much gotta be like signed up for the newsletters to know when you're going to be able to go in for those reserves. But right now the price it's going for seventy nine ninety nine, and you know it's just going to be a matter of time before somebody is going to be able to hack the hell out of these joints and do them just like the classic NES Mini. Uh, what was it last? They put like what eight hundred or a thousand games on there. You know it's just going to be a matter of time before somebody's going to be able to do like the same thing for the Super NES. One game that I particularly, well, actually two that I would love to play on the Super NES. Uh, three actually comes to mind. There was a really awesome Spider-Man arcade game that came out. I don't know if you guys remember that one specifically. Uh, but I remember at one point you have fought a humongous, I want to say maybe you fought a humongous Venom or Mysterio. It was, it was like the best Spider-Man actual arcade game. That was around at that time. And I haven't seen anything really come close to it since. It was really good. Uh, Maximum Carnage was good too. I, I would admit that. Also for NES. I, Super NES. I would love to play Spawn. I never did truly play that game. In its entirety. I watched like little bits and pieces. Of mostly my friends playing it. But I never actually picked up the controller. And played it myself. So I would love to get my hands on those games. And I'm just thinking about any other titles that kind of jump out at me right now. Uh, I'd have to really sit down and really, really think about it. But I think an uh, honorable mention, for sure, Killer Instinct. Uh, I gotta play me some Killer Instinct on the Super NES, man. Uh, I'm excited. Are you guys going to be checking out the Super NES? Let me know what titles are you looking forward to playing if you're going to be able to hack this bad boy. Are some of you all maybe just going to be looking to get this to sell on eBay? Be honest. Because, uh, look, me, originally, I was going to try to get two. I was going to get one to keep and one to sell. And what ended up happening, I got my one. But I wanted the money, so I turned a $79 profit into, I believe, a $300 profit. So when this Super NES drops, trust me, I'm getting two of those bad boys. I'm looking to make, I might get a thousand. We'll see. I might be able to get a thousand. Okay, so we went on ahead. We went a little bit into OT. We almost went about an hour, 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to just pause the, the I'm just going to pause the discussion right here. Now, by Thursday, I'm going to come right back. And by then, we're going to be able to talk about what all had went down on SmackDown. We'll also be able to dive into some more wrestling topics and other topics outside of wrestling. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to be dropping that one for the downloads and on demand as well. As always, I appreciate you guys that check out the show every single week. Remember, if you love what I do for you guys... You can do a couple of things, man. If you haven't done so already, subscribe so you never miss out, man. Give the show a follow all throughout social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Use the keywords, The RCWR Show. I got episodes of The RCWR Show available on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, TuneIn, 
It's all over the place. Use the keywords, the RCWR show. So again, probably this Thursday, I'm going to be releasing another edition of the RCWR show that's going to be available exclusively for downloads and on demand. So you guys will be able to check it out that way. And uh, like I said, we're going to have more topics that we're going to be able to get into. I wanted to honestly just give you guys a short show because I know it's the 4th of July holiday. Because honestly, if this was going to be a regular show, it it would go like the normal two hours. But I don't want to do you guys like that. So we'll definitely pick up a lot more discussion later on in the week. And that'll actually not, I repeat, that's not going to be a two hour show. What I'm going to be dropping this Thursday at most is probably going to be like maybe an additional 40 minutes. And that's honestly it. So when it's all said and done, you'll technically have a two hour show. If you combine this with what's going to be coming out later this week. And then don't forget this Thursday, I'll be live on Facebook. I will be offering match predictions on what I think is going to be going down with WWE's Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view event. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, but that's going down on Thursday as well. But on top of that call, that match edition, I'm also going to be releasing another episode of the RCWR show. We'll talk about SmackDown. I'll give you my thoughts on that because John Cena is going to be returning. I'll give my thoughts on Mar Ronaldo coming back to the WWE through NXT. Also offer some candid thoughts on this whole Jim Cornette, Vince Russo ordeal. Talk about Slammiversary. We'll also talk about the Glow series that's on Netflix. And there's another documentary I want to bring to you all's attention that I feel that a lot of you all need to check out if you are a wrestling fan. So more on that in a couple of days. And in the meantime, I wish for everybody to have a fun and fantastic 4th of July holiday. I will check you all out next go round. Everybody be safe and be kind to one another. Happy 4th of July! Do you love the RCWR show with Lee Sanders? Then support the show that's currently ranked in the top 10 shows on Spreaker.com in the wrestling category on Patreon.com and get exclusive access to new original content including our 30 with Lee series bonus and vintage RCWR episodes, exclusive guest interviews, prize giveaways, online community chat, live show call-in features, and so much more. Support the RCWR show on patreon.com forward slash RCWR show. Once again, that's patreon.com forward slash RCWR show. The RCWR show with Lee Sanders, entertaining you since 2011. Thanks for listening in Infinity One Productions presentation, keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive.